Well, hello, YouTube. Captain Dave in the Wolf Den one more time. And what you see in front of you is a collection. Back in the day, I just called these jerk jiggers. You may be familiar with these. This is one of my little favorites right here. You may be referred, you may be know about these if you're a saltwater fisherman. They will work in freshwater, I am sure of it. But this is a little tiny gotcha plug made by Sea Striker. Well, we all know these. They catch Spanish mackerel, bluefish, ladyfish, all the little quick feeders. The blues definitely love these. What it really boils down to is any fish that eats small little minnows little glass minnows that move quick through the water these will catch those fish they're commonly referred to as if you've never heard this before a pier bait because you gotta go back in time so now we're gonna roll back in time back in the day not everybody had boats you had to be so wealthy to have a boat Let's say back in my dad's era. He's 82 years old. When he was a kid, his dad was a huge surf fisherman. And they fished piers. And they might rent a boat here and there. Not a lot of people had boats. So a lot of people surf fished. And they fished uh, off the, you know, piers in their area. And... These baits back here, the name of these baits were kind of, uh, in a general sense, called pier baits. Now, this is going back pretty far. This may be my oldest one. These are like handmade, like the little gotchas. This is a tube, okay? These are all made, oh my gosh, here I go again. These are just a tube, if you're unfamiliar with them, with a lead pressed in, and then they figured out a way to run a through wire that holds this back treble, has this little swinging treble right there, and makes an eye. And the slanted front gives it when you, that's the reason I've always called them jerk jiggers, because you let it sink and you snap your rod tip and this thing dance and darts sides to side with that slanted face. All right. Well, this was a real old one. I've seen them around. They're available, I mean, in the antique lure market. I actually have this one written down here, and I have seen it on a website where there's a lure collector and he kind of goes through these. This was called a River Park Tiger. It was from the 50s, and it was built by T.W. Koenig in Fairhope, Alabama. Same thing, except this one's got sort of a tail, just some screw-in eyes, and there's lead here in the front, and that's how it was built. And... This one, I think, pretty much hand-built, you know. I mean, there's no big-time machining going on of any sort. And here's another uh, pretty old one. This one was in the 50s, and this may have been right in there also. There's lead in here, and you can see they close, They also call these clothespin baits or clothespin lures because you could literally make one of these out of an old wooden clothespin. God forbid any, anybody would do anything like that today. So there's one. 
And then they started to get a little fancier. Here's one, I call this the frog face. This one is now, eat. there was several people who kind of got into making these. And now you can see this one has sort of bulbous eyes. No super slant, but it's got a slant. And it's got the clothespin type body on it. This is old. This was an old used one. Here's another one that's just a little bit bigger. And another frog-faced one. All right. Well, about, I think, the late... 50s getting into maybe the 60s they got more mass produced they made them in florida a guy named palmer made them i believe some of these could be a palmer i'm not sure back here you can see again the clothespin now this isn't a palmer because they called the palmers it was a palmer seahawk this is a coast hawk here that's an old coast hawk wood and paint slanted front I've got a whole bunch of them back here and what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna restore these okay I'm gonna take these hooks off I'm gonna put split rings on with new hooks I'm gonna leave the paint alone but what I'm gonna do is I got some rust-oleum just clear and I am going to seal these see this one this one is different now this one is a actual seahawk i can barely make it out there and then there was the coast hawks here is a brand new i just got these in i bought these for myself for my birthday i got all these over here these are straight out of the package vintage coast hawks from Texas and you can see that the the heads a little different all different colors all right this was a real popular color for some reason all right and look at they even put a little metal fleck on the bottom here but you can see everybody kind of got into this here's a really big one Where the lead got really large. This is probably close to two ounces or so. And that one's a Seahawk. Now here's some of the paperwork that came with my new pile over here. Coast Hawk, one ounce, made by Coastal Manufacturing in Adkins, Texas. And the people who I bought it off of threw in this little like typed paper. And it says, Coast Hawk Lures. The Coast Hawk is very effective lure for blues, mackerel, flounder, trout, tarp, and snook, stripers. They actually spelled it strippers. Reds and bass. Because of its weight of approximately one ounce, it is very popular. It is very popular when a heavy, deep trolling lure is needed. Try different actions. Can, uh, two different actions can be achieved by the angler by retrieving with short, snappy, up and down wrist snaps of the rod using a particularly slack line and controlling the depth of the run by the speed of the retrieve. A perfect zigzag action results. This action near the bottom is very effective for species which stay in that area and for top striking fish, use a pumping wrist action with a very rapid retrieve and obtain a dive and sink action. Color selection should be dependent on brightness of the day, color of the water. 12 to 15 pound test line is recommended on a full reel. I don't know where this came from, but that came with all these brand spanking new ones. So you can see the progression here. These, you know, you really can't change the hooks out unless you want to cut them, cut a hook, put it on, put a split ring, something like that. One of my all-time favorites, though, is really sort of this one. This one, you can tell, it's of the same, you know, kind of uh, jigging-type lure, but it's a little fatter. 
And today, you know, even today, there's a lot of people who got into making these. All right. So I'm going to show you those. Okay, come on. Treble hooks, treble hooks. Don't you love treble hooks? All right, so here's one similar to, let's say, this one here. This is, this is a tsunami with bent wire. But that's a tsunami right there. Okay, it's a knockoff of the original gotcha plugs like these. Now they come in all different f situations here where they don't have the bucktail, they have a treble hook. They have double trebles on the bottom. All different colors, this one's a plastic tube. They got metal tubes. Um, gotcha makes them with uh, mylar inside, all kinds of different stuff. These are just a complete knockoff from Wally's World. All right. But this one was called like the Shark Hawk. I remember the packaging. I believe this one was called the Shark Hawk or something. Or I had, now you can see I changed the hooks here. I had to split these VMCs and then re crimp them on right there. So that's how I just changed the hooks out on these. Now you can see the difference also is how these are wired on and these aren't. So there's different variations of them. People have tried different different things. All right. The Tsunami one is literally called the Zip Jig Pro, I believe. I mean, this is how many I have. Okay. I've got all these. My, You can tell my favorite. I love this. Just a single hook with the bucktail on it. All right. I got, of course, all of these. I don't know. There's probably two dozen in here. And the reason I have them is you can lose them very easily. Getting snagged on the bottom. This one right here is used. As you can always tell, you bang it on the bottom. And look at the feathers or the, the bucktail here. It's all greasy looking. You know why? Because, as I said in an earlier video, I really like these tubes type, metal tube type, because I'll take my Procure bait scent and squirt it into that, into this tube. And in that video, I believe I used this one, and I caught a speckled trout. It wasn't a big one. But I said I was going to. Let me wipe a little of that off. And I did. This is the reason why I'm sort of even out here. See that right there? That's a little 5 8 ounce gotcha plug with a trimmed bucktail single hook. Yellow, yellow and chrome. I have whacked the trout on these like no tomorrow. The current was running and I was fishing real tight to pilots. And all we did was pitch this out, let it sit in the current and twitch it. So let's see if I can do anything here with this. I know you're looking into the sun, but third cast with it, it's a trout. I always get the ones with the bucktail and the single hook, and that's a tube, right? And I take this, my good old Procure bait scent. Whenever I can, I try to use this on lures, and I fill that tube. Needless to say, with a treble hook up front and a single hook in the back, you really catch them with this. <laughs> Feed them metal. I love metal. Because trout will definitely suck these up. 
because of the fact that it looks like a little glass minnow dancing through the water. I prefer to fish these in current, not a lot of current. I mean, if you're using a ton of current, if you're fishing a ton of current, then you have to go to bigger. But I will cross current cast these and the trout will hit it. I've caught, uh, of course, the yellow mouths, the weak fish. I've caught those on them. I was telling Orowak, which is a regular viewer, commenter, contributor to this channel about how he should pick up some of these because I can't even think of why a striper up in Long Island or the weak fish or anything would ever turn its nose up in, with this, especially if you take and you use the tube type and you fill it up with some Procure scent. So it's also percolating scent out the back. I've got some other ones here. I'll show you these. Years ago, somebody bought the rights or something to make this type, these big, heavy Seahawks, just like this. I believe it was down in Costa Rica or something like that. And the tarpon fishing down there, you know, is just through the roof. And these guys were taking these out. Just like over in Louisiana, they used the coon pop. If you don't know what a coon pop is, look that up. They also use the coon pops down in uh, southwest Florida, I believe, too, during the tarpon tournaments. They would actually use these in Costa Rica at one point. I don't know if anybody ever went down there, but I had a friend that went down there, and uh, it was kind of rough, but the first couple days they went out, and the guy clips this on and tells him, drop this down to the bottom and then reel it up like, you know, three or four times and don't do anything. Just have it go like this, up and down in the, out in the, off the beach where the tarpon were. Tarpon are t notorious for feeding on some kind of worm when it hatches. I see little types of worm things even here out of Mayport in Jacksonville, Florida. I see them in the water and they're wiggling around. It's some kind of worm. They're small. They're never this big, but for some reason, the tarpon would suck these up just like they do the coon pop, which is nothing but a ball of lead with a spike on it. And you take a curly tail and put it on. And then it usually has some way of attaching a hook and then you put a 16-aught circle hook on top of it, and you just hold it over the side, and the tarpon eat it. So, that's where some of these big boys kind of come into play. Well, I keep hooking myself on these, but this is a two-ounce gotcha. And I've heard, you if you do hook a tarpon on one of these, you can expect this to come back to completely destroyed. Even these over here, I mean, they they come back completely cracked. They're wood. This is plastic. And this would come back completely destroyed. You control these. You can cast these. My objective this year is to have, if I'm out at the jetties or something, I'm going to have one of these on, and I'm going to do that. I am going to drop it to the bottom. I'm going to jig it. I'm going to kind of jig it. And I'm just going to even let it sit in the current just with the rod and the rod holder because, of course, I will be tending to customers. That's sort of what I'm going to do just to see what it does. This is, like I said, these are a two ounce. The only place I can really find these is Bass Pro Shops. In case the current isn't running really hard, I'll be switching up to different various weights. This is a one ounce, right? And I don't know if I'm going to or not. I guess we'll see. I, you know, I have never used any of my vintage ones, but now I just got in these, which are stronger, much stronger, because, I mean, look at that, how the connection is. These are much, much stronger, and they're wood, but I'm thinking about even putting these into service 
I'll, put, I'll carry these on the boat and I'll do it with these also. I'm going to now, I'm going to cut all the hooks off of these and I'm going to replace them with split rings and I'm also going to clear coat them to save the finish here a little bit. That's a little bit of history with the gotchas, commonly known. I always just called them jerk jiggers. And uh, I just thought I'd pass that on. You can pick these up a dime a dozen now, as you can see. There's probably more than a dozen right there because I know I'm going to have my customers on spinners using these just to have fun catching Spanish, blues, jacks, ladies, whatever. There gets that time of the year. I am drawn to the simplicity of it and the fact that this is a lure that you can jig. You could use this on your on literally jigging tackle. You don't need to just use a vertical jig on jigging tackle. There might be an instance when I go offshore and I use this in and around a reef this summer. Use these. They'll get whacked by all kinds of fish. So I'm going to do a lot of experiment this year since I've got my quite a collection and I've got these for customers here to be able to cast and just have fun. So like I said, the simplicity of these is what draws me. I've got lures that are so technical. I've got lures that are the hook folds into them and they swim and they do all, I mean, it's like, you know, damn near ro robotic. The plastic, the way they did a realistic image of a real fish and stuff, that's all fine and dandy. But for some reason, I'm drawn to the simplicity of something like this and at the same time, the versatility of being able to put scent just not on it but in it and in this area in the jacksonville area there's just so much current there's so much depth that i am fishing that you need something now this is only five eighths of an ounce but yeah you know, most of the time this baby's going to be going and touching the bottom <laughs> real easy you know you, you cast it out you let it sink it's going to the bottom Especially if you're using like one of the one ounces or something. I mean, this is a missile going to the bottom. And with that current and the depth that I'm commonly fishing, that's the type of lures that I love playing with. So, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up. It's only one little tiny thing you need to do. It's just click the like button. But it's all fishing 24-7 here at the... Jetty Wolf Fish Camp. Living the dream, as they say, right? I'll see you on the next one. Sitting around the house, got nothing to do. I think I'll go fishing, scare away the